So, look, I will certainly say I, and I'm sure kind of all of us, feel, you know, a little better because Dallas lost and you sort of see this path. And, yes, it almost started looking juicy with, like, well, the Eagles could have a home game in the second round, and they really almost could have. I mean, that 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 game last night hung in the balance at the very, very end. And, and even so, you know, at Detroit, it's not the scariest second-round game. I mean, it's – Certainly better than what we perceived all year with, like, you know, at Dallas or at San Francisco. Once you, When I say all year, once you saw that the Eagles were going to be on the road. So, yes, I do feel better today at 6 a.m. than I did yesterday morning at 6 a.m. when I was sleeping, by the way. Um, but I can't let that obscure the reality of, like, it comes back down to the Eagles. Like, this isn't about Detroit. This isn't about Green Bay. This isn't even about, like, San Francisco yet. This is about, like, today. This is about the Eagles and Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And I'm going to tell you right out of the jump that I think the Eagles are going to lose the game tonight. Now, obviously, I hope I'm wrong. Obviously, if you want to convince me I'm wrong, I'll take those phone calls. We will take those phone calls at 215-592-9494. I mean, I just felt like coming in here today, why uh, beat around the bush? With like, well, maybe this. I mean, it could be maybe this, maybe that. I get it. But I'm just going to tell you right from the jump, unfortunately, my expectation is that we go to bed a very, very, very unhappy uh, group of campers tonight. Because I, I, what I've seen in recent weeks from the Eagles is a team. I, I, I'll boil it down this way. I'll, I'll boil it down to three fundamental points. Number one, the Eagles have one of the worst defenses in the NFL and, and maybe the league's worst. Maybe the worst, although Darius Slay being back should help, obviously. But maybe the worst defense in the league. And I don't mean left of the playoffs. I mean in the league. Number two, a broken scheme on offense. And number three, I believe it. I don't know it for sure, but we've seen signs. I believe broken will. But listen, if there's one thing yesterday's playoffs showed us, it's like anything can happen, man. So maybe they, they do find a way to get this thing back on track and pick up steam. I mean, it is a topsy-turvy league. It is week to week. We've seen that for years now. Maybe they went in the lab and actually figured out how to pick up a blitz and how to, you know, cover guys defensively and all that good stuff. But as we sit here today, I'm telling you out of the gate, I'm picking an L. Drives me freaking nuts to say it, but I got to keep it real. John Ritchie, talk to me, man. What? What are you thinking? I mean, yesterday was wild on a lot of fronts. By the way, Saturday was boring. Um, but what do you what do you make of our football team, and what is rattling through that brain of yours? Well, you're picking an L. Everyone's picking an L. I'm I'm picking an L. I, the, our team uh, did not play well enough for us to feel good heading into this game. I do believe, uh, it, man, we needed AJ so badly. AJ certainly, man, that would have helped. But that's sort of like crying over. Spilt milk. The, the the AJ thing, that's because when I watch those games this weekend, that firepower that we just observed, that enthusiasm, that over the top, like th- those teams that won, they're like bulked up puppies that turned into these behemoths that can now like hang with good Godzilla. John, their quarter, like, their quarterbacks. I'm wondering if they're mutant puppies. Are they? I'm wondering if those quarterbacks are better than Jalen already. Well, I'm they, talking about they have Jordan Love and the Texans better guy. than Jalen. Yeah, uh, and and we're seeing it right now. The way Jalen's playing right now, the, uh, Jalen's nowhere close to what Jordan Love's doing. And it's crazy to say Jared Goff like looked really, really good and consistent and accurate and smart. Uh, watching those wild card games, I watched the cream of the crop rise, and I'm downright afraid that we're not gonna rise. That we'll be grounded this round of the playoffs, and you know, head on home because our defense can't hang with playoff layers of complexity and playoff wrinkles, and and that playoff intensity that I watched from the Lions and the Packers over the weekend. You know, we have we seen that from our guys. All season, that much focus and togetherness. Our coach talks about togetherness. Are our guys really all believing and pulling in one direction? And and did we grow this season to where we're playoff ready for Godzilla like these other teams are? Uh, some of the main stats, we went over those. They tell us we are not ready, especially defensively. I'm not going to exhaust those. It's disgusting. But 
I know we can control this game if we so choose to take control by running the football. Or at least we've got to try to take control, seize control of this season back by calling runs and running them. And Joe, yes, runs from under center. I, I do think that would that would behoove us. Runs forever until Todd Bowles and company just can't imagine anything but a run. And that's when you can finally play fake. And and then have crazy pull that, that we're looking for. And that's when we get started with our offense. The last time we played this team in September, we ran it for 201 yards. I felt they were unstoppable, John. But here's the thing. Joe, when, when you watch that game, it, it was – it was a few months ago. We still resisted running it. We still resisted running it. We were. We, it was like gangbusters. Like DeAndre Swift was. With every time he touched it, he was getting that edge, and he was showing such burst and speed. But we would. We would stall out in the red zone because we immediately went away from the run, and we would try to throw too much. Throw, throw, throw. Again. We ran it for 201 yards against these guys, but I know we could have run it for 300 had we called it right. And I just hope we call it righter this time because we will have a chance to beat this Bucks team. I I know we've played poorly, but that Bucks team is not a world beater. I know they've got good receivers and they've got a quarterback who's been playing really well and our pass defense has been horrendous, but we can control the tempo of this game with our offense, with that run game. We can control things with our identity. If this is our identity. Well, what is their identity? Well, that's 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 the crux of it. Last and the last week, I think we were informed that our identity is now we, we can run the football, right? Didn't Nick say that? You know what I think their identity is, John? Can I tell you what I think it is? Yeah, please. I think they're a team that is fractured. I don't think their well, identity. That's not a winning identity just, for I, postseason I'm, football. I'm well, is aware, it? I'm well aware of that. I mean, I'm just telling. If you ask me, if you if we did a thing, and look, guys, we'll take your calls on 37 different topics today. I mean, it all comes back to the Eagles and the Bucks tonight. But there's so many aspects to this. Whether it's the Eagles' offense, will they reinvent themselves? Will they run the ball? Will Jalen be under center? How are they going to compensate for no AJ Brown? Is Quez Watkins going to have seven catches, or is he going to have two? You know, does does uh, Zacchaeus get in there? Does does Julio Jones get in there? Like, there's all that. You know, they never did sign Zach Ertz. So what you got is what you got. Hopefully, they use Dallas Goddard a lot. They need him a lot defensively. Like all these issues, right? Or is the front four actually going to you know sack the quarter? Like all these different issues. But we'll also take your calls not only on who you think is going to win and all the twists and turns of all of it, but like if we were to say to you, what is the Eagles' identity? I mean, I'm telling you, and I hadn't thought of this before the show. John just brought up the word. I'm just telling you off the top of my head, I think the identity is they're a fractured team. Why do we still not? Well, okay, and that's a terrible identity. Yeah, I, I don't think that counts for our <laughs> intents and purposes. It's not what you're looking for. Why do we still not know this team's offensive identity? I, I Defense, forget about it. We don't have an identity. Defense, we've got a different identity at each level. Each week, it might change. But, you know... Are we a running team now? Like, did Nick Sirianni tell us last week that we're a running team now? For this week, maybe? I don't I don't really know. I doubt it, John. I mean, <laughs> but, I, I mean, listen, without but, A.J. Brown, you would think it's more likely. Hey, we can all agree on that, right? Moving for, sure, I absolutely. Mean, moving forward, well, we know uh, that, that our O-line, that our D-line, those are the you know the main structures the the strength uh, points of, of of our entire uh, team. That's what we were told last week by Nick. And why not just lean into that? Continue to lean into that. It makes all the sense in the world. I do think our identity should be running the football, but I've thought that should be our identity all year long. Yeah. Is is Nick's identity as a former wide receiver interfering with? His identity as a play caller, uh, which interferes with Brian Johnson's identity as a play caller, and who's really calling the plays, and who's really calling more of the plays. That's another thing that we'll have to get into. And by the way, how ready is this team going to look when they take the field tonight? Can you imagine this team looking cohesive and together and powerful and just taking the field by force like we saw 
from the Detroit. Really, they, th- did. there were teams yesterday they did. that did this the right way. That's right. Dallas wasn't one of them. Can our, no, they weren't. <laughs> you, do you really? Do you think our team has that in them? Do you think our coaches can have our team ready like that Detroit team? So is here's ready? my answer. You ready? I think it's possible, but unlikely. I've seen. I've seen enough. I've seen enough to to not believe in the Eagles. Now, look, guys. I will admit. You know. Crazier things have happened. I mean, we saw the Eagles come back from a 31-10 hole versus the Giants with eight minutes left in 2010 and win the game. Comebacks happen. We saw the Phillies two years in a row come back on, from June 1st where they looked, I'm not going to say dead, but they looked like they were on life support June 1st two years in a row. So turnarounds happen. I mean, the Eagles pulled out a miracle six years ago reinventing Nick Foles as they went into the playoffs. It was a way better team around them than this team, but I mean – there is no doubt, if there's one thing about sports we know, it's that it can be very unpredictable. I mean, my God, we saw Buster Douglas freaking knock out Mike Tyson. Anything can happen. It's in there. I just don't think they have the heart or the wherewithal to grab it. But listen, I hope I'm wrong. Your phone calls throughout the show, 215-592-9494. Where do you stand on all of this? So much to get into. We'll do it all show. And, yes, we will celebrate Dallas losing. That was beautiful.